All right. So Microsoft is killing Edge and then reviving it as a Chromium derivative. What do you think about this, Raven? When I saw this, I shook my head. Because, you know, on the one hand, it's a smart business move. You know, they don't have to maintain their crappy little rendering engine and their, their JavaScript compiler and or VM, rather. They don't right. have to maintain all this stuff. They're just going to be Chromium. Right. But they're going to be like the other evil Chrome, right? Because, <laughs> you know, Chrome, like, steals all your data. So they're going to use Chromium, and then they're going to add all their data stealing crap to it. It's literally going to be Chromium with a new icon, which is the Edge icon, and then with all the Microsoft Edge, like, data stealing crap and, and inject your ads into the web page and all that other stuff. It's literally just going to be that. Yeah, yeah. It's like, it's like how many more chromium derivatives are we going to have how many more do we need none honestly they should just kill edge no one cares about edge no one uses edge you know the only but person i know to... who uses edge is my boss and and i i have done everything i can to convince her to stop using it but she won't stop using it but yeah. she's the only they... person you you know what they should do you know what they should do? What? They should just bundle Firefox with Windows 10. Just Firefox. Oh, Windows that 10. would actually, I, that would win some brownie points with me if they right? did that. Because you can't do Chrome. I mean, Google no. might allow you, but they're going to want some money. But Firefox? You don't have to pay Firefox to bundle Firefox with anything. Right. You know? That would be Mozilla's so in, great. And, and, and Mozilla would love it because they would actually pick up sales again, or not sales, but, you know, users. Market share. Yeah. yeah, and you know it's like, and you know, a lot of people don't give Firefox a chance anymore because you know, like most things, you know, Firefox went through like a bad period where like Chrome was better. Yeah, but we're starting to hit a problem where everybody is using Chrome or a Chrome derivative, and everything is built for Chrome. And you know, websites don't. People, you know, I love hearing, well, this website doesn't work right. It's like, yeah, because that website's only built for Chrome. Because whatever retarded webmaster built that website only made it for Chrome. Right. And used only Chrome-specific stuff. And guess what? That doesn't work in Firefox. And it's like, ugh, this is why you should only use the HTML5 standard. You should use no, what are they called, extensions or whatever? Yeah. You should use no extensions. It, none. It drives me nuts where, you know, as a web developer, like, you know, having to, like, create, like, use, like, the, uh, the, the, vendor prefixes like drives me crazy and the idea of like certain things not being available in in different uh web browsers drives me crazy and just it's such a nightmare to to be doing like you know javascript or or css and having you know different things available on different platforms and and it's and like certain things that are like quote in the pipeline for di for different browsers just never seem to arrive. Like there's this bug in in uh, Chrome on Android, where the viewport height changes based on if the address bar is visible or not. And as far as I know, this has been uh, a problem for like four years, and it still isn't fixed. And it's like, I just don't understand why things are so broken on the web. Like it just doesn't make any sense to me. Because everybody's doing their own thing, even within their own companies, like the Android version of Chrome dev, they're just doing their own stuff. Plus, you know, there's other things for Chrome that take precedent over, you know, compatibility. Like, you know, they have to spend months and months of research so that it signs in, doesn't tell you that it's signed in so they can siphon all your data. Right. Remember that lovely little thing from just a couple months ago? Yeah. And that actually really made a lot of people very angry. Because, like, you sign in, and then what? I can't remember what it was. Like, it stays signed in, or, like, it barely notifies you. or like, No, I don't remember what it was. You sign in to Gmail or something, right? And then it would automatically sign you in on the browser. I can't remember what it was. So I don't use Chrome. Yeah. It, I, I, can't, I can't keep up with all the garbage they do. But I, I do know that it had something to do with people signing in and then not really being notified that, hey, you're still signed in. And, you know, Google, you know when you're signed in, Google's, you know, everything you visit, Google is, like, you go here and you go here. You know, and it's building a database on you, and it's like, ooh, creepy. But maybe that's just me. I mean, maybe, you know. No, it is creepy, and it's like, uh, I just don't. It just makes me so upset when when this kind of stuff 
it's like uh, so all right microsoft is basically uh outsourcing their responsibility for security updates and they're outsourcing their responsibility for you know and 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 on the other hand though they're also like contributing code to chromium and they're working on you know improving the uh the overall experience it's an open source project so i don't know why i'm complaining about it either you know what i'm saying like it's cool that microsoft is embracing an open source thing but at the same time like microsoft and so we give them shit you know (laughs) if it was i don't think it has anything to do with that if it was just edge with chromium be like okay i mean why but whatever you know yeah but it's not just edge with chromium it is literally quote edge with chromium in other words you know it's going to have all the microsoft privacy issues right now if it doesn't have that because they haven't said much about it in fairness to them they haven't actually said that much about it so let's assume that it's just edge and all it is is a rebranded chromium and it's like okay that's fine whatever i mean i'm not gonna use it but if that's all it is you know whatever you know it's just i mean but then it then then the problem becomes why like what is the point of this yeah because if it's just like an icon change for chromium then they could do that in a single day. Like, like you don't yeah. even need a team for that, really. You just need, like, one or two people to, like, maintain it and push out the patches. Like, what do you need a team for? But the fact that they have a team and everything around it is like, okay, what are they adding? Right. And you know, the fact that it's MIT licensed means that, you know, they're not going to, like, Microsoft's not going to have to publish their source for what they're changing in it. No, they just have to attribute that it's Chromium. That's it. They just they just have to say that this is based on Chromium and you can find Chromium here. That's all they have to do. So I guess we'll see. I mean, if it's and, and I know it's going to have the ad crap in it because I'm sure you're aware that Edge injects ads over top of it. Oh, yeah. I'm sure you're aware. Yeah. There's no way they're going to give that up. Uh, I just this kind of stuff just makes me absolutely bananas, dude. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I mean, I don't foresee it. I mean, it's coming to Mac. Not oh, Linux, yeah. but it's coming to Mac. Yeah. It's coming to Mac. And Xbox. Oh, my God. <laughs> well, Edge is already on Xbox. In a way, that might actually be a nice thing. Because, you know, web games are kind of eventually going to become a thing. It's less of if it's going to become a thing and more of when it's going to become a thing. Yeah, yeah. With WebAssembly, eventually, especially when WebAssembly fixes the weird issue with memory, like actually being able to allocate memory properly. Right. Um, you know, instead of just saying, Hey, I have a gig of memory and this is all I have. And then when I go over, it just dies. Um, you know, when, when we finally reach that point, which should be pretty soon, actually, um, you know, web games are going to become pretty viable because performance wise, web assembly runs pretty damn near close to native code. And that means it runs faster than like say C sharp or Java. Right. And once that happens, I could see web browsers becoming like, even more of an operating system within an operating system than they already are. Cause people like load up Firefox or Chrome and they'll go play the, they'll, they'll play games. They'll go to their favorite website and they'll play games. Right. I, I really do foresee that. I'm wondering like how much of this is, uh, Microsoft, like hedging their bets on that front, like bringing it to, uh, probably a lot because edge has been behind keeping up with web GL web assembly and so on. Yeah. Like, they get caught up, and then they just fall back behind. Because, remember, Microsoft only pushes out updates to Edge twice a year. So that right. as soon as they get caught up, they're behind again. Because uh, Edge is still not served updates to the Windows Store. When Apparently, when Edge was first announced, they were going to move it to the Windows Store. They have yet to do that. Which is hilarious, because that probably just proves how crappy the Windows Store is if Microsoft can't even move Edge to the Windows Store. It, it's kind of flabbergasting to me, honestly. Um, I don't know. Well, did you see the latest... Uh, speaking of Microsoft, did you see the latest changes for .NET? I saw something. I didn't read the article, though. Well, this is a little off topic, but it kind of has more to do. Like, Microsoft is kind of really embracing open source. Okay, so one of the big things that, like, Mono, for example, has never had is WPF. The Windows Presentation Foundation... Not Foundation. I can't remember what it specifically stands for. I, I don't really use it. Even back in my Windows dev days, I never used WPFs. I always used WinForms. 
Um, uh, but I, I sort of know how to use WPS. But anyway, that's not really the point. The point is, is that uh, they have open sourced WinForms, uh, WPF, and uh, it's going to be in the next version of .NET Core 3. I'm not sure what WPF is. Uh, it's basically like a shinier version of uh, WinForms. You use it to build like, you know, applications like Microsoft Word and so on. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, I was right. It is the Windows Presentation Foundation. That's literally the name of it. Yeah, sorry. It, it's it's for it's an inter, it's uh it's like an interface library, so to speak. You know, you can build um you can build all kinds of stuff with it, really. Oh. Like, all kinds of stuff. Oh, so it's yeah. Is it kind of like GTK a little bit? Yeah, that's essentially what WinForms is, all but right. it's a lot prettier. Like, you know, it's kind of like the. Like, I guess if you want to do it in the Java speak, you know, you have Java 2D, which, you know, you use to build, or rather, let's say Swing. You know, you have Swing, which is kind of like the equivalent to WinForms. WPF would be the equivalent to, like, Java FX. Okay. You can build shinier interfaces and stuff, if you have any experience with that. If you don't, then I just confused you further, but um, <laughs> that's all it really is. But but the thing is, Mono's never been able to have that because it relies on so much garbage, and it's not as heavily used, so they never bothered with it, right? Right. Well, now it's open source. Hmm. With .NET Core, eventually, I feel that Mono is going to disappear, and .NET Core will be the only thing. Interesting. Especially that, considering that. Where would that leave projects sorry. like OpenRA? Nowhere. They'd work just fine. You can run OpenRA on .NET Core. Oh, cool. Yeah. Doesn't affect it at all. Hmm. But see, the whole point of .NET Core is, is like it was very small and it didn't include a lot. So there's still things that Mono has that .NET Core doesn't. Right. But on the other hand, .NET Core works exactly the same as .NET because it is .NET. So you don't get like, you know, performance differences or other weird little quirks like you do with Mono. But Mono has been improving rapidly and a lot of that stuff's disappeared. But still, it's nice mm -hmm. that, you know, they they open sourced it. Right. I'll send you a link to it so you can put it in the show notes. So if anybody wants to see the uh, .NET release, the next one. And it's all MIT, so you can do whatever you want with it. Right. Like, say, put it on the Librem phone, for example. Oh, man. I, the the future, man. The future. I'm excited about the future. I want to see where all this stuff ends up. I know, right? When, uh, when we talk about, like, you know, the news or, uh, you know, different announcements from different companies, I'm always, like, I always have, like, this... You know, if it's like weird news, like uh, like the Microsoft killing Edge, uh, then I'm always like so curious to to know where things are going to end up, how things are going to shake out. So it should be fun, <laughs> even if it's like you know a facepalm because it's basically Microsoft's like Vivaldi or whatever. I just hope it doesn't have the privacy stuff because even if someone does use Windows 10, I really would like to see them have one less thing stealing their data. Yeah. I mean, I don't really agree with the usage of Windows 10, but I would like for people to be able to use whatever operating system they want and not have to have privacy issues. I agree. What do you guys think about this news? Is uh, is Microsoft uh, in the right or in the wrong here to be dropping, you know, Edge HTML in favor of Chromium? Let us know in the show notes. Uh, forum.heavyelement.io you can hit us up on twitter or leave a comment down below uh, if you're watching this on youtube 